Hello, and welcome to what's bubbling at Zimbi. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at the new Zim 10 integrated physics. So physics right inside of Zim. Let's uh, go to some examples now. They can be found at zimjs.com slash physics. And you'll arrive at this menu right here. Boom, boom, boom. We were just briefly taking a look at the beads there, that are a bunch of linkage uh, or linked um, items then. And uh, we've got a bunch of circles falling. Great. There's a goal example. That's the easiest one. And we'll probably take a look at that first, where we're seeing that we're scoring on that goal. Badonk, badonk. And we've got this triangle here. We're playing around a little bit with the linear damping as well. Note when we throw that, it doesn't go anywhere. When we throw the ball, it does. The ball also has this thing called restitution to make it more bouncy. And so those are some of the things and a contact. All right, uh, cool. And then we've got this keep it up soccer game. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, beep. Neat, huh? And so that's applying a force. And bump, contact it, and uh, set it to zero. So it's a force, not only that, but we're, we've got some images here as well. We're using bitmaps. And then we've got drive. Drive lets you use your keyboard whomp, to drive around. Isn't that cool? Oh, look how fast that is. Uh, to drive around and turn off these circuits or turn them back on. Indeed, if you hit them again, it turns them back on and you're trying to turn them all off. And then you'll win. Woohoo! All right, so why don't we take a look at some code to see how we've integrated this into Zim. Well, actually, how about the docs? So we go to the docs and we type in physics or fizz, and there's a couple ones. One is object.addPhysics, so we can take any display object. This is here in the normal uh, methods, such as pose and loc and uh, drag. So there's zim drag right there. There's also zim add physics now. So we can say to the circle, uh, my circle dot add physics, and there it's added. You can specify how you want your physics to act there as it shows here in the bunch of uh, parameter bits there as well. Okay, so that's one place. Uh, also in physics is remove physics. That would remove the physics from an object. And there's physics itself. So this is down in the controls of Zim now. So like I said, we've integrated physics. You still need to import your box 2D and your physics 2 uh, Zim library. But uh, all the documentation, all the methods and so forth are here uh, right uh, in Zim. So that's great. And this goes quite in depth at describing what's happening here in physics in general, adding it to our shapes, uh, what the physics can do. We can have forces, uh, torques, uh, impulse forces, and then some information on box 2D, some examples there, parameters for the main physics, such as gravity, the borders, and whether we want to scroll in which frame if we've got multiple frames. So those are, if we're making a physics object, uh, or world, that's uh, the parameters for that. Here are the methods. Um, accessing borders, dragging, can set everything to drag, join. So we can join two Zim objects together in the physics world. So what you'll find is in the past we had um, sort of two worlds. We had the physics world and we had the Zim shapes and you would then map those two worlds. All that mapping is done by add physics now. So you just make a Zim shape add physics, and the mapping's done in behind. Um, things like join used to be done to the physics objects, the physics bodies. And uh, that was always a pain in the neck because you're dealing with B2 vectors. Their methods are all start with uppercase and it's just annoying. So what we've done is abstracted that and brought them all into Zim. Uh, not all of them, but the ones that we use primarily into Zim and documented them in here as well. So there's joining, breaking, uh, debugging. Uh, you can still add the maps, but you don't need to anymore. 
Then we have the properties for the physics world. So the world itself, so physics.world gives you access to the, the physics world in Box2D, so we can apply special Box2D things to that. Uh, scale, step, gravity, a ticker, um, that kind of stuff, the, the various borders as well that get automatically created if, if those are indeed created. Then we have methods for the objects, and here's where it gets interesting. So the add physics, uh, that was also, this is duplication, it was already provided up above with add physics, but check this out, an impulse force directly on the body. So we can say circle.impulse and uh, tell it how much in the x and how much in the y. So we used to have to do that on the physics body, and the mapping then would take care of it, but we'd always have to go into the physics body and add it again with the box 2D, uh, B2 vectors, and things like that. So we brought that right onto the, the Zim uh, shape, or whatever uh, we're um, controlling with physics. There's a force. A force is a more, it's a force that repeats in time, so you would have to run that in a ticker to constantly apply that force, as opposed to an impulse which happens right away. There's letting the body sleep or awake, there's following uh, the body, there's controlling the body, so that means you can add uh, keyboard control and that driving uh, one where we were turning off the circuits, for instance, that that's as simple as circle dot, dot uh, control round brackets, and that's what it's doing. And also whether we're contacting. So contacting used to be quite confusing, and we brought that in as well and made it uh, simpler. Um, that's like the hit test in Box2D, but we brought it into Zim uh, called contact. So that's pretty cool, huh? That's all the, uh, the the Zim the Zim shape methods and properties here, but there's also then a, a section in the docs right in the docs for the physics body, and here are some of the box two D methods that we can apply to that. So a get angular velocity and so forth, um, etc. So you would look out at the uh, we we've brought in Box2D that was used in Flash. So you could look at the documentations for that to grab the docs. But that's all listed there, along with the properties and the various global variables that we're bringing in for Box2D. All right, so that's all a neat, tidy package on physics. Let's go in and take a look at some code. Why don't we take a look at the goal example where we've got three shapes. So these are three Zim shapes. One is static, it doesn't move. The other two were dragging. And uh, let's see how we did that. Reduce that down and take a look here at goal. So there's Zim 10. Here's box 2D that we're bringing in and the physics 2.0 that we're bringing in. We started off with a new physics. As a matter of fact, as soon as you make a new circle and then add physics, it will automatically make a physics world for you. But that physics world that it makes has a gravity of 10. And we wanted to look at this from above with a gravity of zero. So instead, we've made the physics. And if a physics is already made, then your circle will assume that when you add physics, you're adding it to the first physics world that's been created. Okay, you can also specify that if, if you so desire. Uh, but anyway, we make a physics with zero gravity. Zero gravity. The borders will automatically be made to around the stage. At that point, we've made a circle. That's just a Zim circle, centered it on the stage, and said add physics. We've applied a certain restitution. That's how bouncy it is. Otherwise, uh, well, let's take a look at this, shall we? We open that in the browser. There she be. And that's how bouncy the ball is. Boingita, 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 boingita. Pretty bouncy. If we don't have a restitution of 1.1, anything over 1 is bouncy, bouncy. Um, we refresh that here. Here's the default bounciness. Oh, really, basically, no bounciness. So that's your default physics uh, restitution is not very bouncy. So we wanted to make that bounce here by passing in restitution to it. Here's a rectangle now. We've centered uh, that 
on the stage, it positioned it at 70, and added physics. Now it's important to center red your rectangles because the physics world all works from center reg as well. So if you don't center reg rectangular things, it won't work well. Uh, it, it'll look like it's off, like out of sync or whatever. So add physics, uh, false. False is uh, whether you want that to be dynamic. So that's saying false, that means it's static. In other words, that rectangle won't move. It's in the physics world, things bump into it, but it won't move. And now here's a triangle. We're adding a physics. We've changed the linear uh, damping on that. So linear damping is how easily it slides. So let's take a look. Now we throw it. Uh, did I, uh, I don't think I refreshed that. Let's try that again. So we save that. Didn't save it. So save goal. Refresh here. Now it slides normally. That's normal sliding, just like this circle. So linear damping. But what we've done is increase the linear damping to 10. So that's quite a lot. Uh, I think the default is maybe it's 1. And now when we throw it, it doesn't go anywhere. It can be pushed, yes. But uh, what we wanted to do is make sort of like a defenseman. So there's the defenseman sitting there. And we wanted it to spin around a little bit when we hit that defenseman. And so that's why we uh, the angular velocity or angular damping is the same but um, the linear damping has been increased, so it hardly slides. All right, just some things that uh, used to confuse me in physics to start. Uh, just those two things, linear velocity, angular velocity. Uh, you could make this not spin very much by increasing its angular velocity. And then its restitution is its bounciness. I went for years with box 2D without realizing what that was and always having stuff that didn't bounce. <laughs> so now we go. And one more thing we added here is the contact down below. So, oh, and the physics drag. So we're saying drag everything there. And then contact. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that didn't lead to contact. <clears throat> uh, anyway, we're saying circle dot contact, call this callback function right here. And the function will receive the Zim object that is hitting the circle. But this is all the box 2D contact, and that used to always scare me and be con con complicated in there, but now it's made easier. We've also, uh, if you want, you can get the physics uh, body as well, the body. And that's important for the borders. If you want to measure if you're contacting the borders, the borders don't have Zim, bo uh, Zim objects, so that would be null. But the body will tell you that it's a border, and we'll maybe take a peek at that later. So if the object we're receiving, if, it, if the object that it's hitting is equal to the rectangle, then we're turning the rectangle's color to red. So isn't that nice? The rectangle's a Zim shape, so we've brought everything into Zim. So we're, we're not finding out if we're contacting a body. We're uh, finding out if we're contacting the Zim shape. So as much as we've been able to, we've integrated this into Zim, so it's the Zim shape that we're talking about, not the physics body that is being mapped in the background. Okay, and after a certain amount of time, we set the color of the rectangle back. So that's that example. Here's beads. The beads example, uh, we've made a tile. Um, now, tile is a handy thing. Uh, if we take a look at the beads here, open the browser. There are the beads. We've tiled each bead. So there it is. There's the tile. It's a vertical tile that goes down. And then we've made a bunch of beads after. So there's us tiling the beads. There are 10 of those beads. Oh, wait, no, that's how big the rectangle is. And there's its colors in a series. There's six. Six of those beads going down and one column. One column, six rows of the long beads. But that puts the beads inside of a container. That's what a tile is. A tile is a container. And then we've centered that on the stage or wherever. I don't know. We located it actually at a X and Y. But physics only works from 0, 0. So the whole physics system works from 0, 0, top left corner of the stage. So we can't map properly. I mean, we could if we put, uh, I suppose, a fair bit of effort into it. Even then, it would be weird. 
um, we're, we're not mapping things inside of containers to the physics world. So what we did is we removed the, the beads, each bead, we've looped through the beads each time we get the link, and we said link.add to stage. So that pulls it out of the container for the tile and adds it to the stage in the same place because add to uses local to local. And so, great, we position the beads in a tile, super, that gets its positioning, but now we want to pull them out so that they're on the stage so physics will work with them. Now, physics actually does work. You can have Zim containers. You could have kept that as a container, but that container would have had to been positioned at zero, zero for the physics to match. And also that container could not have been scaled bigger and it could not have been rotated. So as long as the container is not transformed, you're welcome to use containers. And as long as they're placed at zero, zero, then they'll match up properly. Otherwise, you can pull out of containers and put them right on the stage as we did here. Now, one thing to be careful about has nothing to do with physics, but it has to do with the way that we're, we're looping. When we loop, we uh, loop through the children of the beads. So uh, of that container, we're looping through the children. If we remove the, the child, if we take that link and add it to the stage, it removes it from the container. Anytime you remove something from a container as you're looping through the container, you need to loop backwards. All right, otherwise the index numbers get messed up. So this would come into play as well if we were looping through a bunch of monsters to find out if we're hitting a monster. If we remove the monster once we're, we've hit it, if, if we remove it, then we need to loop backwards. It's easy to loop backwards. Uh, we know that we've had to, so that's why Zim made loop really easy. There's the function we're calling each time we loop. The next parameter is if we're looping backwards or not. True. So now the index numbers aren't messed up. It starts off with the highest index number, removes it, goes to the next lowest index number, removes that, goes to the next lowest. So it doesn't interfere. If we do it the other way around and remove the bottom layer first, then all of a sudden the index numbers for everything else are wrong. So uh, there you go. Just watch. Uh, that's a couple things. One, Zim physics works at zero, zero on the stage. So probably best not to um, put things in containers. And, uh, you can do that as long as the container is not transformed and placed at zero, zero, or that it is placed at zero, zero. Then you can put them in containers. OK, that's uh, one thing. Two is when you are removing something, even if it's adding it to somewhere else that removes it from what we're looping through then loop backwards. Okay, great. And now here's us joining. So uh, now we take the physics world and we join the link to the bar. This is if it's the first link, we're joining it to the bar across the top there. That's this bar. That's a physics um, bar as well, a Zim bar that was turned that had add physics added. It's static, so that's why it's sitting up there and, and doesn't move. Uh, you can see it right here. It's a new rectangle. Add physics, false for static. So our first bead links joins to that. And then afterwards we're taking the second bead and joining it to the bead in front of it. So the first bead. So we're joining one and two at at the point at the top of uh, point one. So you're welcome to come in and take a look at that. But that's a join. That's that's joints. It's like, wow, okay, that's pretty easy. Uh, Physics.join, zim shape, another zim shape. Where on that zim shape do you want to join? Cool, huh? Um, the game of keep it up has forces. So here's the game of keep it up. And we made the physics world. Uh, we, we wanted the border on the top to be taller. So uh, the boundaries are a little bit different when we specify the borders for this keep it up game. At zero at the X minus the stage height. So that means it can go minus the stage height again up above uh, the stage width. And then the height of the boundary is the stage height times two. So that's the whole stage height up above it and the, the stage height that is in view on the stage itself. So that allows the ball to be bounced up high in that world. So if we go to the menu here and hit the keep up, note that poof, if I can get it up there, there it goes. 
that ball went up, but the sides are still all the way down from up high down to the sides. So that's us specifying the boundaries. Oh, actually, it looks like we took off the top completely, <laughs> uh, which could run into problem. In theory, we could kick that ball so that it went up over the sides. The sides are basically the stage height again at the sides, up above um, zero. But we took off the top border. Uh, we probably didn't have to. We could have just left that. But that's that's how you would do that. You can physics.remove any physics object, and that will do it. So uh, what else do we have? We have a ball that is an image this time, a PNG. We center wedge that. So remember that a PNG is a rectangle. It's a picture. It's a rectangle. So you got to center wedge it so it matches up. And one neat thing is when we add physics, uh, normally that would be a rectangle. So if we took that off, uh, we'd be kicking around a rectangle. It wouldn't roll very well. But we said, hey, make that actually a shape of a circle. And what it will do is it will map out then a circle on the bounds of your rectangle. Great. And we said make it this bouncy as well. We have a bottle in there uh, where we've adjusted the angular damping on the bottle. And here's where we're making our force. So there it is, ball.impulse. We could have a zero force. Now imagine that we had an up force of 10. We might expect that to uh, go up. So let's open that up in a browser. Uh, it hardly seems to move. That's because uh, an impulse, uh, 10 is what gravity is. So we think an impulse is going against gravity, minus 10 should work. That's not how it works. If we applied a constant force of minus 10 in a loop, constantly in a loop, minus 10, then we would be combating gravity and we would see the ball float in the air sort of thing. Right? But for an impulse, the force needs to be bigger. We've chosen a, a force between 250 and 450. So if we put 300 here, for instance, 300 as our force in the negative direction and refresh here, boop, there's a negative impulse force of 300. All right, uh, this, by the way, defaults to the center of the ball. However, we want it where we press it. So when we press the ball on the left or right-hand side, we want it to, to, to act on that place. And we're uh, creating a side force as well based on, on the difference between the ball's X and where we've pressed on the ball. So this for is a, a side force, a smaller side force, and that's what's allowing this to spin if we don't press it in the middle. So if we press it on the side, see that spin? Even though we have no force to the side, we do have a spin. When we bring in the force from the side, that was side force right here. When we bring in this, the force from the side, you'll see that it, it will act as if we've kicked it on that side and it kicks it that way right onto the bottle and kicked it that way. Isn't that brilliant? That looks great, huh? So uh, then we're finding out if it's contacting the body at the bottom, the physics border bottom. Remember that the physics walls, the border, don't have zim shapes. This is the zim object it's contacting. That would be null. Here we're asking for is the body the physics uh, border bottom? And if so, then set the score back to zero. We're dragging only the bottle. Uh, we don't want to drag the thing that we're pressing. When we press it, we're giving it a force. We don't want that to interfere with the, the mouse force that comes from dragging. So you can specify what you want to drag in here. Here it happens to be just the bottle. If it was something else, you could drag something else as well. Normally, that would be everything. We want to drag everything. But uh, in this case, we don't want to drag the ball. So I think that gives you a pretty good introduction to the forces here uh, that we're using, or <laughs> forces of physics. <laughs> Uh, you can take a look at that, how we, uh, it's pretty easy, we just looped through and made a bunch of balls. And uh, there they are, operating in the physics world. This has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. Remember that you've got your documentation there uh, in the two different places, the, the physics controller. 
the main physics thing, which pretty well has everything. But also up above, there's the add physics, which go along with things like hit tests and animates as a method of an object itself. If you just say add physics, it will give you a default physics world with a gravity of 10 and some borders. But if you don't want that, then, and by the way, if, if that's the case, then you would ask for, say, ball.physics would give you access to that physics world. Um, that's just like saying var physics equals new physics up above. And that's what you would have to do if you wanted to set the gravity to be something else uh, or the bounds to be something else, etc., or, or use the follow. Then you would have to, to make your own physics world there specifically with new physics. Very cool, huh? This is Inventor Dan Zen, Dr. Abstract, for What's a Bubbling at Zim, the new integrated physics in Zim 10. So uh, hopefully that works well for you. I mean, we just made those examples and it made it so much easier. So uh, it's very nice. Very nice, very nice. We'll uh, come back later with some more bubblings and new things in Zim 10 next. Ciao.